So we are going to hear a presentation about the state of women in Debian currently. It's going to be presented by Miriam Ruiz, who has been part of the Debian Women Project since 2005, and Patti Langasek, who has been attending DevCon since 2004 and has finally decided to join the uh, new Debian developer process this year. Hello, my name is Patty Langoshik. I have been somewhat uh, involved in Debian for nine years now, um, since DevConf 4. Uh, well, I'm Miriam Ruiz. I came in 2004, the first time, and I came through Debian Women. So I know that it's important to, for this project and they work to, to get more women into, into Debian. So, uh, Debian Women actually originally started in 2004, and what we want to cover today is the journey from 2004 until today. So how has the Debian project improved Debian, and how has the Debian Women project actually accomplished its goals? Um, in the beginning, uh, you can see we do have a couple of uh, images of the Debian Women uh, uh, people congregating at different DebComps. At DebConf 4 was the beginning of Debian Women. Uh, um, Aaron Clark and Amaya, uh, Amaya Rodrigo gave a presentation in Porto Alegre discussing the, the concerns that women have in getting involved in Debian. And uh, the amazing thing was there was such a huge turnout that they overfilled the main talk room trying to just get across why we need to get women involved in Debian and how we can do it. Uh, what it did for us was it opened that dialogue so that we could start having this open conversation with the community at large about diversity in general, not just women. And thus the birth of the Debian Women Project. We started with very simple means. We uh, created an IRC channel, then on Freenode. It's the same channel, but now we're on OFTC. We uh, created a mailing list uh, to, for people to basically feel welcomed into Debian and to feel less intimidated in getting involved, having people being able to respond to them in a friendly, welcoming, non-threatening manner. And we also created our website, the Debian Women website, which just gives our main, main goals and our missions. But bearing in mind that Debian exists to welcome everyone, and Debian Women, which is a sub-project within Debian, it's, it's not separate from Debian at all. We exist to encourage and promote women to be more active and participate fully in Debian. Our mission is threefold. First, we intend to balance and diversify Debian for the better of Debian. We do this by actively engaging with the interested women, with the women who want to be involved, and by encouraging participation and involvement in the Debian project. Second, we want to promote women's involvement in Debian. So we want the women who are contributing to Debian to be actively acknowledged. We want everybody to know that these are contrib contributors and what they're contributing to Debian. We provide mentoring and role models. Marga is an excellent role model for pretty much all women in Debian. She, has, she is instrumental in helping everybody, for example. We also want to create opportunities for collaboration with new and current members in the Debian project. And, mostly, we welcome the involvement of everyone interested in increasing the participation of women in Debian, not just women. So, this all started in 2004. We developed our mission statement. We started actually branching out and reaching out to women to get them involved. To get a good starting point, early in 2005, uh, Magni Oinsun, Oinsun? Oinsun? Uh, did a master's thesis study uh, to, to basically analyze the participation of women in the mailing lists. She also collected some data from other studies, and uh, sh what she found was that across the, the open source community, there's less than 2% of women 
actually actively involved. And even worse than that, in Debian, there was only 0.3% participation on the mailing lists. Uh, just FYI, in the tech industry at the time, women participation in tech industry where they were getting actually paid for their work and contributions was 20%. So we still fall well below even what industry standards are. So the take home is that Debian has less than half of the participation levels of other comparable projects. Just a few numbers of what she actually uh, studied. She looked at these three main mailing lists. In Debian Devel, there was probably the worst participation of women, which isn't surprising because the percentage of women was really low. In Debian Vote, we had a pretty low percentage. In Debian Women, we were still less than half percent participating on the Debian Women <coughs> mailing list. Yes. So, that was nine years ago. Surely we're doing better now, right? So, Laura Joanarena actually recreated this, uh, this study and um, analyzed similar uh, parameters. We do have, I, I do want to give full disclosure that the dates are not similar, but the percentages are still pretty on, still pretty spot on when we look at other data. In Debian Devel, there is no change. In Debian Vote, there's some change. We have a little bit more participation with women, but not, not a lot for a nine-year increase. In Debian Women, yay, we're more than 50%. <laughs> so some more statistics to kind of put this into perspective about what's going on. In 2005, we had three female Debian developers out of 965. In 2013, we now have 18 Debian developers. That is an increase, and, and we, we don't want to play down the fact that we now have 15 more Debian developer women. But if you look at the increase of men Debian developers, we're still not quite, we're, we're not keeping up pace, and we're not really promoting ourselves as much as we need to. Five women voted for DPL. Uh, in this last election versus 385 men. So the participation level of the women is actually significantly lower than the participation of level of the men. We have, we've had one DPL candidate and in 2005 we had nine women in the new maintainer queue. In 2013 we have one. Just to drive home the point, we're not really getting much more traction in women being involved in Debian at this point. Uh, you'll notice the participation in DebConf. We have pretty much the same amount of women coming to DebConf from DebConf 7 in Edinburgh to today. And you'll notice women are not actually joining the new maintainer queue. They're uploading, we're getting their first uploads here, but they're not going into the new maintainer queue and they're not adding their key to the key ring. So they're there, they're interested, but they're not actually coming into the project. Yeah, I wanted to, to include this, uh, this slide to see how other some other projects in, in free software are, are make, uh, managing and how these numbers can really be increased. And uh, I'm, I'm having these uh, figures, They're, they are quite old, they are from, from 2010 in Ubuntu and in Mozilla, which are two projects that seem to attract women better than we are. And uh, in Ubuntu in 2010, there were already 5% five, uh, 5 of women developing, in the, involved in the development, somehow in the development of, of the project, taking into account that involved in the development is a very, well, it's a very wide word. It, it means from participating in community to making documentations, translations and stuff. And in Mozilla, 
Uh, they are they are already over 15 percent or 16 percent they were already there in in 2010 and this Two projects. There are other projects which I don't have the numbers, but they are also higher than than us. For example, you know, pro project and, and stuff. There are all, there are other projects doing worse than than us too. But these numbers show that um, whenever some project is uh, well, some things do work. There's some things that can be done that seems to to achieve some results and to get more women to into the development. So. The point is, uh, what are the, the questions? Would be what's preventing us? Even even though we have been, we have evolved a lot since uh, 2005 and, and stuff. We had we are more we are a more welcoming community. We have uh, improved a lot in, in a lot of ways. Uh, we're still not getting more women, and the, um, the I would like to to know to find out where the obstacles are. Where, why are not uh, Joining, why there are not more women joining the development of, of uh, Debian? And we don't, we still, we really don't know where we are losing the women. I mean, are women not using Debian? I mean, they're using maybe preferably, I don't know, Fedora, SUSE even. Uh, are they using Debian but you don't feel attracted or we're not uh, being able to show them that they can join the development in somehow, in some way? Do they try to, to get into the development and then they, they are scared and, fly, and flee away, the, f the first contact? We don't know what, uh, what, uh, where the, pro the problems lie. What we know is that there are some certain barriers, entry barriers, that affect women different than men, statistically, this is all statistics. And uh, I would like to, to ask something. From the women here, how many women are already involved somehow, in some way, as Debian, contribu and as Debian contributors? Yeah, how many women are not? This is the rest. <laughs> okay, that's how many okay. That's okay. males, how many people here know women, that partners, uh, sisters of staff that are not involved in Debian? Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, right. So why do you think, why don't uh, the, the women here that are not involved in the development of Debian or the people who know women who are not involved in the development of Debian, why do you think they are not involved? What, uh, I mean, it's an open question, and I, I really would like to, to get some answers. Hi. So actually, my wife, she's really asking, well, how can I get involved? And, and, and she's, well, she's sort of scared of getting involved because she cannot hack, she cannot package, she cannot code. And it's always like, well, yes, get in contact with the people. And um, so we arranged, we couldn't arrange her getting here for DevConf. This is a bit unfortunate at that point. But um, I think this contributing for a non-coder, for a non-packager, for a non-IT person is unclear. It's not, it's not so evident what other jobs are there. So. Yeah, so it's not. Uh, so I understand that it's not so evident that there there are a lot of things to do in Debian that are not coding, that not even technical. Yes, it's yeah. it's it's about. Um, um, I was yeah. asked to stand up actually. Yeah. Um, it's it's about shyness maybe. In in that case, not generally, but in that case, it might be. But has, issue. has she already tried to at least get in contact with something and try to do? I mean. Has she tried to, to find out if there's something in which she would like to get involved? Or she's just like, uh, I don't feel there's sub nothing, anything there for me. Yes, she, she, well, she's, she's involved in the Debian Edu work. Um, she's involved in the, we deploy Debian Edu at schools locally. So she's involved in the local project. And she has Debian on her notebook because nothing else is allowed at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Yes, and, and um, I think, I think, I don't think, well, I don't know what it actually is. We have to investigate at home probably, yes. But okay. it's, it's, I hear shyness, I hear, well, what can I do? And, well, yeah. I cannot contribute because maybe, I cannot package, stuff like that. Maybe yeah. she finds, I mean, I know it's, it's a common feeling, Debian, or getting in contact with Debian at the beginning, quite intimidating. Uh, sorry? I mean, does she, feel you, you said she's she's kind of shy in a way 
Is uh, she finding Debian maybe too intimidating, too scary? You mean you mean doing it all in public and stuff like that, or yeah, like getting involved of more or less. I don't know. I don't want to say the word officially because there's. Do you know what her impression of Debian women is? Do I know what? Do you know what her impression of Debian women is? What what she believes Debian women is for? Um, no, actually, I'm, I don't know. I don't know. So she's. I, I know that she's reading the list, and. Um, and at some points, she's wondering why to differentiate between men and women. So what is the actual goal? She's, she's querying that, but you have to ask her, not me, actually. Thank you. Uh, have more? I, I have just have the mic, so I'll take it off. Yeah. So, um, I just want to say, um, 17 years ago, I came to Debian because a woman just invited me. So uh, she, uh, it was Susan Kleinman, and thanks to her for all the time, she, she compiled um, four Linux kernels for the special uh, device I needed, and uh, that's why I thought Debian is the right distribution for me. So um, the other thing I wanted to say, um, as far as I know, in IT generally, women have not so big a share like uh, men, but um, in non-free software, the share is way larger than in free software. Right? Yeah. And I was thinking about, well, um, free software is about freedom. It's not really about harmony. We are swimming upstream all the time. And maybe the harmony we would like to need in Debian is um, something people is not really attracting because they really do not really like to go upstream and fight for something. Right? And maybe this might be a reason. And if I see the numbers, you showed between Debian and Ubuntu, it is two or five percent, this is the same order of magnitude. But Mozilla is kind of 10 times it, because people, Mozilla is used on Windows and it's everywhere. It is not really upstream uh, anymore, it is um, something which is mainstream and, and it might fit more with this feeling of harmony and not in contrast to some, something else. And it's just a theory, I don't know it, but. Maybe it's an idea. So I don't know how to uh, solve this problem. Yes, so you mean that one of the factors could be that uh, yes. the women are more attracted to more mainstream, less, uh, I don't know, yeah. geeky, which is, weird which stuff? Which is not, not bad. I will not evaluate yeah, yeah, yeah. it, right? It's, it's it could okay. be. So if you'll permit me, I have actually three comments which I will try to get through quickly. First of all, I think the way that you phrased that question is actually a little bit unfair because you mm -hmm. asked, do you know women who are not involved in Debian and why not? Well, I think everybody in this room probably knows both men and women who are not involved in Debian. Absolutely. And are we putting too much expectation on the women in our lives regarding this point? Um, also, I will avoid the obvious discussion of certain parties that I could speak about who are not involved in Debian development currently. I will leave that to them since they're on stage. Um, <laughs> the uh, second point is, um, and this goes to what Mike had to say about asking the question about why the focus on men versus women. I've found, interestingly, there seems to be a, a very, uh, there's a cultural, uh, I, so like German cultures, Austria, Germany, their approach to uh, equality, um, you know, gender equality is, it, it seems to be a solved issue for them. And so they perceive any kind of affirmative action kind of ideas like Debbie and women, they tend to view it very negatively is my experience in talking with people from those cultures. Um, and so there is, there is kind of a, if you're trying to actually get uh, more women involved in Debian, you need to be sensitive to cultural differences in that regard because like in the United States, we view affirmative action as something, we, we view this as an ongoing problem, but in Germany they look at that and say, well, if you have to have this system, you're doing it wrong in the first place. And they may be right, um, I, don't, I don't know, but it is, it's, it's like there's different perspectives on gender equality in that regard, which does play into this. And I guess the third thing, I, and I would actually turn this back over to you now, is I would, I would like to ask you if you are familiar with the concept of an imposter syndrome, and yeah. if you can speak about, about that and what role you think that plays. I think it's a very real syndrome. I, I mean, whenever you move into, that might, might not be widespread knowledge, but whenever you move into, especially women-only lists, like, uh, no, Linux chicks, uh, sisters and stuff, 
you 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 get to know that the, the, that the syndrome is quite, it's quite widespread. I'm um, sorry. I I'm, realize we're having this conversation, and many of the people in the audience may not realize yeah. what I'm referring to when I say imposter syndrome. So should I should I explain that, or would you like to? It's okay. Okay. So imposter syndrome is this idea that um, women, as outsiders to the community, will often feel that they are not good enough, and that they are they are some way less qualified than their male peers in the field, despite having um, equal or superior skills, they will, they will have the internal, their, 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 their own impression of their own skills is that they are not as good. And as a result, um, as a result, they will have a tendency to, uh, you know, not step up in the same way that a man might in the same situation. And it, this is not specific to men versus women. This, this, the idea of imposter syndrome shows up in other other scenarios, but the but but eventually some some event happens and they have this light bulb that goes on and this has been the case for lots of women in technology and a lot of women have talked about this over the past few years that oh I actually am good enough I've been doing this all the time I'm just as good as them and I just thought I wasn't good enough so that's that's the idea of imposter syndrome and I don't know what the right strategies are for dealing with that but I think I think it's uh, you're totally right and I think it's more. My, my personal feeling is that it's more widespread than, than most people think. And I mean, most of the women around me, me included, uh, have sometimes or somehow or even most of the time that uh, imposter syndrome. So yeah, I mean, it's, uh, so that's, that's a fact. Uh, how to cope with it? I don't know. I mean, it's, uh, it's hard, to, it's hard to, to do because, I, I, my opinion, because it's so... Um, I mean, it's so, so bigger than Debian. I mean, it's so um, uh, involved in our, in our cultural and, and social environment from scratch that... Hmm? Okay. I actually do have an idea how you can tackle this problem. That's basically the same idea I brought up in the NM Debian both. Give people clear guidelines. Tell them, okay, if you have a subset of these and these and these skills, then we can talk about you being qualified enough. Just give them data on how to be, what, what does qualified mean? Because as a woman, if you walk around this conference, you will meet, yeah, roughly basic two types of people. The one type, I'm not sure which one is worse. There's one type who will overly encourage you, you who will tell you, yeah, yeah, you did some work and you feel no, it is not enough. And if you look at the data, what you should have been doing, it is really not enough. So over-encouraging is not helping, and you have these people who are really picky, which is not helping either. But maybe some people with reasonable ideas what you should, what skills you should have, and what you should have done, how involved you should be in the community, should get together and gather some data and make a list for people who are not really sure if they're good enough to look at and just say, okay, this I can do, this I can do, this I cannot do. Maybe this would be helpful. Um, do you guys want to respond to that, or should I just... Okay. Um, uh, hi, so I'm really glad you guys are running this session. Um, I guess I had two remarks so far. Uh, first is when you show all these women who are uh, in the... who, are, who have do, are doing their first uploads, that's great. Um, is somebody making sure that they get around to applying to NM? And if not, uh, if you do that, then you will give those women a social advantage over their men peers which, is, which would be perfect, so you should do that. Um, and secondly, um, in a way this dilutes the topic, but I hope that it's con useful contextual information. So when I think about diversity issues, I try to think about not just gender diversity, but other kinds of diversity. And so along those lines, I think about Indian people in the IT sector, and I consider, if you look around this room, uh, maybe all the people who are of Indian or South Asian descent, can you raise your hands? Right. Um, so you can actually do the same graphs that you did at the beginning for non-white people in Debian. Uh, they represent n percent of the uh, proprietary and even maybe generally software contribution world, but only n divided by 12 or whatever in Debian. And uh, to me, that suggests that the problems in Debian are broader than gender diversity problems, and that's sort of why years ago I gave a talk called Debian for Shy People, which is kind of like trying to unify these issues. So just one thought. 
Yeah, I think, well. But, okay. Well, I think this imposter syndrome, Steve had said, is, is true also for men, so there is no, no uh, I think we all suffering from it and just um, some people are more able to ignore it and some not so much. And the, the only thing I think we, we should in, uh, invite just everybody, as you said above, and I think in, in my team, we, they are also showing up from time to time some women and I really, really hope that and uh, we are inviting them and I'm really happy with, about this, but um, you can't drag somebody in free software. He needs to come voluntarily. And I just think we should keep on the good work to invite newcomers, be it women or men, and really, really hope that there are more women amongst it. We, uh, we have also developed tools, I will report today in, uh, about mentoring and so, and I hope we can invite more women, but I, I don't see what, what I could do differently to up to before. Enrico wanted to, to talk to him? No. Okay. Uh, hi. Oh, Enrico first. Um, uh, I want to answer to what Francisca said, and uh, I agree with what she said totally. And uh, I think on that respect we have two issues. One is a problem about self-assessment. Uh, we, we do not give easy ways for people to self-assess and figure out if they you know, become self-confident with their work in Debian. One tends to feel like, oh my god, I don't know enough. There's people discussing things I do not understand. There's always people discussing things you do not understand in Debian, so that's perfectly okay. And the other thing, it's about an overblown perception of the project's expectations, which is somewhat related, but not quite. Uh, since every time you actually do something for Debian, you get criticism from someone or the other. It looks like the project has very high expectations. Whereas what you need to learn is to not care about criticism because it's the backtracking system problem. You make a software, get bug reports. And that many people are used to that in our environment and uh, the instinct is to try and find ways to improve it, and it's a positive instinct, but we tend to forget to find ways to thank you and to say, well, that actually is useful. It made my life better. Um, and w we are not that used to that, and that drives very much ha up the perceived expectation of Debian, which is a problem because uh, it's hard to get involved when you feel that people, that you can never fulfill people's expectations. Um, and that curbs creativity, it's not just an inclusion problem, it's, it, I think we lose contributions based on that. Uh, as, well, after I said that, and uh, I would like to ask if we are in a general question time or if we should let you go on with the talk, because I may have other things to say, but I was I keeping them for I have a couple of uh, slides more, but uh, I mean, I would, I, I, I find this interesting enough to, to keep it uh, running. Hi. Um, so I've heard a few different comments here that all have one, or there's an idea I have that could possibly slightly help a bunch of these different things. I, I, some people pointed out that women uh, and other, other uh, less represented groups might feel um, shy or have an imposter syndrome or not realize the ways to contribute other than packaging or not realize even what Debian does. So we may want to have on our homepage a rotating people in Debian or this, per, or, you know, rotating you know, spotlight on people in Debian and make sure that it includes, you know, clear, I mean, sure, it can include some men and some packaging maintainers, but it should include, you know, clear evidence of the breadth of people and tasks in Debian, uh, including ones, you know, that would be welcoming to people from the backgrounds we're discussing, and, you know, maybe their picture, name if they're willing, or first name, or whatever they're okay with, uh, a summary of what they do, and a link to say, join him or join her, uh, and uh, that would go to the new how you can, get, how you can start to help page. Hmm. It's just it's thought to help encourage them to volunteer and be welcoming. 
these two questions and I will go to the next slide because otherwise, yeah. Do you want to keep on? Do you want, no, 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 no. There were two people want to say yeah. something. Uh, yeah, I can tell you a short uh, funny story about uh, DEPCON 2011. Uh, I wanted, uh, I, I thought this is the best place to, to, to get, get more involved or learn something more about packaging. So I was asking around, uh, why did, uh, did you make maybe a workshop packaging for beginners? So I was told from many people, here's a conference for developer. You are the only one doesn't know it. So it will be not interesting for, for nobody. But I was insisting on mailing lists and on Wiki, and then first signed up maybe three or five people, and then after say, okay, maybe some people just know how to use Wiki, so I, I insist more from my mailing list and talking to people. And then on the end, uh, thank you for Dreadly, uh, uh, the one workshop was, was um, took place, and then on Wiki was maybe 12 people signed up, and in the talk shown up more than 50 people. Oh. <laughs> and and many, many people, especially local people from Bosnia, Serbia, they were very thankful and they wanted to be, that it would be, it would be um, a video of it because they wanted to really get involved and learn about it. So my conclusion is, but now I, feel, I see the, something change because now you have the workshops without my uh, suggestion again here. And this is very good. And you are talking about this, it's also, I think also is very good. So uh, my suggestion, you, have, you should make more uh, tutorial, more, more mentoring and be more open and welcoming. Of course, there's everything documented. Everything said, yeah, it's everything documented. But I think not everyone is able to spend one week of time and reading all documentation. It's easier to be taken by friends and saying, oh, maybe you can start this. And then you read one documentation, and then you, you go to the next step. Uh, I think, yeah, if, if you go this way, you will have more women and more new newbies. I, I think you have to welcoming for all new people. I, I met also a lot of um, shy um, males, so thank you. <laughs> okay. okay, so um, if you'll forgive me, this will take a little bit of time to set up. Um, so I've, I've commented previously about how there are cultural differences between some countries where, where you know, gender equality is, is considered a solved problem in other countries where it's not. Um, so having said that, I'm now going to explain why the Germans are actually wrong about this. They may be right for Germany and Austria, but they are wrong with respect to other cultures. And the reason that they're wrong is that there is a difference if the people in the group in question perceive there to be a difference. So how women feel about things and whether they feel that they're outside versus inside, if they feel that Debian is dominated by men, then it is the case that it's harder for women to get in than men. Um, and I read an article several years ago that um, basically laid out the mathematics of racism and why racism is in fact a natural state of affairs. And it was a very uncomfortable article for a lot of liberals to, to read, but the mathematics is actually pretty sound and it goes into the history of the Rwanda genocide and it goes into the, the race riots in, in Watts in California and about how naturally over time, if people feel that there's a difference between one group and another, they will naturally gravitate and isolate themselves and about the, the idea that white flight, which is this phenomenon of inner cities in the United States being abandoned to, to the, the black American community and having um, the whites move to the suburbs, that this kind of stratification of social groups and this separation of one group from the other is a natural outcome whenever people do not feel as if they're all part of the same group. Whenever those differences are felt, there's a natural separation. So if we believe that having more women involved in Debian is valuable, it is something that requires a conscious effort to overcome this kind of natural separating out of, of, of different social groups because people do feel that they are not part of a group or part of a group in, in some cases based on gender. And that is a cultural reality that I think we all need to acknowledge. And if, if this is something, you, so Andreas, you, you made the comment that you don't know what you could do differently. If you do think that we should have a more equal gender 
based gender ratio in Debian. If you think this is something that should be fixed, it is something that requires an active effort. And this is basically the fundamental basis of, of affirmative action in the United States and other systems. And while you may find that for, for your local community, that's not how people feel, when you look at the wider world and when you look at some of the countries where, where Debian developers come from, it is an issue and it does require a conscious effort on our part to overcome that. Well, um, I was thinking about what you are saying and it's like we are trying to find a solution and women are not all the same. So uh, I think trying to find one unique solution is very difficult. I think having Debian women as a group is, uh, is good because uh, you know you are welcome, only to have the name. <laughs> but we have to have in mind that we cannot treat women as a, um, well, uh, uh, that we ha behave, uh, our behavior is the same or something like this because we are few women here and I think we are not the same at all. So it's my, my opinion. Thank you. <coughs> yeah, I have a, a comment on this imposter problem. Syndrome, yeah. Uh, the thing is, um, we need to start assuming that people know things, both men and women, of course, but I, I'm the first to, to admit that when I see a woman here, I kind of ask myself why she's here. <laughs> I don't like it with myself, but I do it. I don't ask her, of course, but I ask myself. Is that is she here with someone, or is she here because she is a DD, or whatever? So the thing that we can do about this is, of course, try to just, okay, I will for this time, and also from now on, just assume that she's awesome, that she's it's like the most super hacker around here. <laughs> so I think that would solve a lot of problems. <laughs> On that note, before we continue, I was actually asked if I'm here because, because DubConf is gonna be in Portland next year. I was, I was asked that this year. Um, no, I've been here several times and I've been in the community many times. And I've made many community members mad at me Many, I promise you, I am as good at blaming people as you guys are. So, um, yeah, on that note, thank you. Thank you for bringing that up. Because I was trying very hard not to. But since you did, I can. So, the point is, it's, well, we already talked about some of this, but I wanted to, to point, well, even if it's quite late because we've already talked. Uh, so, what's been doing, uh, well, to, that might help to get us more women. Uh, well, in the first place, we, all, we already know that women are capable and interested. Um, we already, we, we've already uh, gotten to make Debian more welcoming to new people, even when it's still not where we w would want it to be. It's still very more welcoming. There's the diversity statement, which is a great, great accomplishment and a w great wording. There's, we have the anti-harassment mail address, which uh, we all hope it would be absolutely unneeded, but it's there. And it's a quick note about that too, the anti-harassment list, um, even though it does say anti-harassment, it is open for anybody who is experiencing some sort of very uncomfortable situation that, that they need help resolving. It's not just meant for what we would normally uh, label as harassment. I just wanted that out there. Yeah, we have we have had for a long time the Debian community guidelines from Rico, uh, and we know that the new maintainer process is continuously being improved. Um, we all we already have more initiatives uh, right now that are encouraging for more people from every every from everywhere every, every type of people to to join Debian. That's uh, the um, for example, it's been discussed the the Debian welcoming team. And there's also going, there has been some ongoing um, controversial stuff about the code of conduct and, and different stuff. And the, we still know, wait, wait, wait. We still know some, some things though. And we still know that uh, from what we've been talking about uh, to other women and well, we, what we feel ourselves, uh, the new maintainer process can be intimidating. The, um, the making the, the step, for example, the mentoring process that has already been mentioned here, uh, it's 
quite intimidating too in some aspects because it um, it assumes it's a, a, the mentoring process and every mentoring process usually it's thought as a, as a long at, at least a medium term commitment and that scares people so maybe the welcoming team might be a, a good approach for for this first stage what i mean is that um most of the women i guess men too but most of the women at least i know uh, find it scary to just join debian and not knowing anyone and writing the mailing list or joining a group where they don't know anyone and a, and a personal approach seems to be working better that's uh, probably the, the whole the whole point of uh, of mentorship program and the welcoming program and stuff so it's um so it's a good thing that we go through like that lines that we are able to to provide some some initial contact in phases someone you can ask how does it work someone who's friendly and um and then uh, regarding different proposals or different things that oh, different things that we could uh, do well um we might we might need uh, some ways to to get people more easily involved one of the big uh, the biggest step for joining most of the free software projects but particularly well most of the uh, free software projects but in debian in general is you don't know where to start you don't have a, a clear path for entering the, the, it was mentioned that maybe lack of tutorials lack of mentoring lack of stuff um we might need to to make some more active outreach and maybe making more visible uh, more visible what it was mentioned at the beginning that there are many ways to contribute things maybe the the thanking the thanking people proposal for Ricos might help and um well well and also um <laughs> this year was the first year that Debian participated in the gnome um OPW project or the outreach program for women trying to draw women into technology more. Um, I, I really want to thank Zach, wherever he went, for his work on that. Um, it, it, we didn't end up giving out an internship for this, uh, but we did have four women actually um, show interest and want to be involved. And um, three of them were also uh, Google Summer of Code. So we managed to bring in one person just interested in the OPW project. And that, I think, was a success right there, at least for our first very short attempt. So we have like uh, a couple of minutes in case someone wants to say something. Yeah, um, I had a, I had a, a quick comment. It's, always, it's often related to how we explain uh, Debian to people we meet and ask and are interested, uh, and especially to our people who do not have like a technical background, people who are not geeks. Uh, that applies to you. A lot of women that I met, um, and it's that actually Debian is not a technical project, or it is a technical project, but ultimately, uh, Debian is a social project. It's about freedom, and it's about how we control the machines and not have the machines controlling us. And this is something that is actually appealing to more people than if I just say, "Yeah, I had code." Uh, and this is something that I like. Uh, I want to emphasize this more, and that might help, I think. Maybe. Um, I, uh, uh, I see two um, reasons to have a Debian Women project. One is inclusion, and one is reaction to uh, situations uh, those situations that happen because, well, uh, there is a minority and some people are not made comfortable in, in something. And uh, I, um, so I think this, uh, these two roles are not uh, fulfilled as good as they would be because there is currently one single point for everything. So with regards to inclusion, um, I think that is a situation where, as uh, we say, not only women need inclusion, there's new developers, there's um, maybe race, maybe, I don't know, maybe, and yeah. reaching out to bring people in need not be specific to women. I mean, 
it doesn't mean that we don't need to bring in women, but that's an effort that's useful for lots more. Uh, the other thing which is dealing with issues that happen because women are minority can probably benefit, well, um, when things happen on the street that make someone uncomfortable, uh, it, it's useful to be able to look at somebody familiar and say, did you see what I've seen? Uh, was it just me? And we, I don't think we have a place in Debian where that can happen. Debian women definitely cannot happen. You cannot forward uh, a private email to Debian women and ask people for comments. That publicly archived in Google, the person that sent you that email may be on Debian women. Uh, so how would you feel about having a women-only mailing list? I would, my personal feeling is that I would be for that. I think that helps. And whenever I, I personally have been in a position in which uh, when the one you, which you described, uh, I wasn't able to rely on, on the Debian women's mailing list, and I had, I had to go to Linux chicks or sometimes even you want to women, but uh, Debian women didn't work for that. So maybe I think it, it would be a good proposal. All right. So. Uh <laughs> we only, yeah, we're, we're out of time, over? and I have, so I have like 10 seconds to describe this because that's out of time to me. Um, basically, what can we do? Find out why those women around you, not, not all women, that's, that's silly, but um, the, the women who are clearly using Debian, the women who are interested in improving Debian, the women who are actually interested or would be interested in this community, find out why they're not getting involved, listen to them. Their concerns are not silly. Don't tell them they're silly. Validate their concerns. They're valid because they're, that's what's keeping them from being involved. And point them to Debian women because we can help them from there. Um, and by the way, when I say we, it's not just us. It's the entire Debian community. If you want to be involved in Debian women, I don't care who you are. Please come be involved in Debian women. We want you to. Um, remind, though, remind them that there are other paths to being involved in Debian other than being a programmer, other than being an IT specialist, other than being a network administrator. You can do other contributions to Debian that will improve Debian. Um, and if you're going somewhere and you're taking your merchandise, throw in some Debian Women stickers. Just get the logo out there, get, get people talking about Debian Women more. And join us. Again, it just please come join us. Give us your ideas. Come to us. We're all very, well, okay, they're nice people. They're willing to listen. Um, I might listen. I might be nice. We'll see. Um, but just join us. We're, we'll welcome everybody. And thank you to everybody for their hard work for helping us put together this presentation.